morning and welcome to the Friday edition of As Goes Wisconsin. So happy to be here with you. Greg Bach is on the board and my very good friend, Carol <laughs> Kane, sitting across from me in the studio today here in downtown Waukesha. How are you doing, lady? I'm, you know what? I'm doing good. I'm doing very, very well. Thank you. And you? I am doing great. Uh, Greg Bach, I know you're running a little on fumes. Oh, I'm uh, I'm doing great. You're doing great. I can't wait for someone to push me into a lake of coffee. <laughs> he's had the Milwaukee Comedy Festival is going on through this weekend. So he's, oh, he's had a very, very, very busy schedule. Yeah, there you go. There the you go for weeks. sure. Hey. So anyhow, you show me more pictures of the baby. She's adorable. She is adorable. Kristen and Mike's daughter, uh, Frances. Uh, she's been sharing lots of photos with us with us. If you would like to take a look at Francis, all you have to do is go to our Twitter page, right, Greg, at As Goes Wisconsin, As Goes at As Goes Wisconsin. You can do that. Uh, Instagram, follow Instagram. Actually, Instagram and TikTok, TikTok and Twitter, and Twitter will all have that intro of Frankie Lou to the world. Our our newest listener in her As Goes Wisconsin onesie. Right, I know it's really <laughs> it's cute. So, it's very so cute. Great. Yeah. yeah, and uh, Kristen, the plan is again she's going to be joining us next Wednesday from ten thirty to eleven. Uh, still not sure if she's going to come out here and bring the baby with her or if she's going to join us on Streamyard. But uh, that will be next Wednesday, so we can give you okay. all kinds of Francis updates. Great, and uh, let you know what's going on. Uh, coming up next hour, we do have a couple of guests, including our friend Dr. Michael McCutcheon. We'll be here to fix your life. If you have questions for him about your relationships or about your job or your direction in life, you can always text in at 844-967-2789, 844-96-PARTY. And uh, we will have Dr. Mike take a look okay. at your life. Okay, doke. Uh, right now, though, we're going to kick things off on a Friday morning with a little, little naked talk. Okay, let's do it. We all remember the World Naked Bike Ride in Madison last summer. Uh huh. And it happens here too. It, it does happen here. And I want you to share your I experience will. in just a moment. But uh, there was a 10 year old girl whose parents brought her to the naked bike ride and she participated in the ride. And is that appropriate? No, I don't. I wouldn't do that. No. If I had a daughter, um, that was this, these parents' decision to bring her to this. But now a GOP authored bill before the Senate Committee on Health, substance abuse, children and families will broaden the scope of Wisconsin's public nudity law to cover any nudity that is intentional as opposed to indecent exposure. Oh, which got is it. How okay. It's defined right now. Sure. So okay. uh, Senate President Chris Kapenga said, if you agree, people shouldn't be allowed to expose their genitals in public and that minor children shouldn't be paraded through the streets and photographed and I encourage your support on these bills. Okay. Well, okay. Um, I wouldn't have done that with my daughter or my son, either one. Right. Um, maybe, maybe I'm a prude. I don't know. I just think that that's probably something that they should, they don't even know their own bodies at, the, at 10. You know, so why are we doing this? I don't understand. Now, that being said, it was a couple of years ago, and I was at Glorioso's Market over on Bra uh, from Brady. Oh, sure, I know it well. And my girlfriend and I were shopping, and we came out, and I was like, "What? What's happening? <laughs> What's happening?" And it was the naked bike ride. And they were. I. What was funny to me was I felt bad for the guys because I'm like, those bicycle seats can be kind of rough. Yeah, you know, it's not necessarily very comfy. No. And a lot of them, instead of that, they were completely naked, but a lot of them had baseball caps on. It's like, what's uh, what are we doing? <laughs> what, what, what's protecting, happening? Protecting their modesty. And um, but there were a number of like lining the streets. There were families watching this happen. And I was just kind of I felt weird. I. You know, because they are completely naked and it's not like they're, uh, how do I put this? Body's beautiful? Not necessarily. Well, and that's part of the whole point of this. Right. Is to promote body positivity. Fine. So, you know, however you want to spin it, fine, fine. 
But I, I was transfixed. I couldn't stop. <laughs> I was just sitting there, you know, and I, uh, I literally, I went home and I was making, um, okay, don't write to me because this is the absolute God's honest, God's honest truth. I was making spaghetti with Italian sausage. Okay. Let me tell you, I felt dirty <laughs> with the Italian <laughs> sausage. I was like, what are we? Oh, golly. But, I mean, there were an, there, hundreds of participants. Oh, yeah. It's very popular. Uh, this new measure being proposed, Senate Bill 477, would bar individuals from bringing anyone under the age of 18 to attend an event at which a group of adult participants intentionally expose their genitals, buttocks, or other intimate parts in a public area. Well, okay. It would also prohibit anyone from taking photos of a child at any such event if the photo depicts nudity. And I, at least for me, that's where the issue comes in with this little girl being photographed. We have a lot of sick people in this world. Right, right. I don't think they need incurred or help. I, yeah, you're right, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it is a big issue. Uh, currently, state law prohibits publicly and indecently exposing genitals or the pubic area, the proposed bill eliminates the requirement that exposure must be indecent, instead replacing it with intentional exposure. A violation would be a Class A misdemeanor, each offense punishable by up to $10,000 in fine, in fines, nine months in jail, or both. This is according to an article in the Wisconsin State Journal. So I, I guess my question for you, do we need this law? Is this a good thing? Is it a bad thing? 844-967-2789, 844-96-PARTY. Dane County Supervisor Jeff Wigand said Thursday, proponents of this bike ride have said they believe this is about their freedom to protest. I ask, what about my freedom? What about my freedom to walk around, walk down the street, and yeah. not be assaulted by nudity? Right. Well, well I, would, I would ask that person, what about... You know, all the people that you're proposing laws to hinder their existence. What about their freedoms? Why is your freedom more important than other people's freedoms, sir? Why? That's a good question. Also, when we talked about this topic a while ago, this is when we got the call from a guy who said if we didn't support. Uh, basically, he said the fact that we weren't coming out wholehearted against this and, and, and chastising the parents that we were trash. Oh, yeah. Trash icon. Trash, I, tra trash icon, Greg Bach. Okay. Um, I, well, you, you, there's a difference between this being out there. Here's where I stand on this. I don't think that I should have to walk down my n regular street and see this. If I'm on a nude beach, totally different scenario. Absolutely. I, I do this willingly, and I want to participate in you know, my nakedness with all the other people. But if I'm just sitting, like, just right, J Jane, we're sitting here looking out onto Wisconsin Avenue in Waukesha. I, I don't think I would like to see a whole group of naked people ride by. <laughs> uh, maybe I, uh, am I a prude? I don't think so. I, I don't think you're a prude. I do think American society as a whole is a little bit hypocritical about, sex and sexuality and well, our, no in doubt. our bodies. Right. I, I do, but I, I don't disagree with you. I don't really want to see that. And when my husband and I were overseas, this is a number of years ago, uh, we were in Greece and we did go to a nude beach, uh -huh. which was an interesting experience. Yeah, I'll bet. And as you said, it's not necessarily the ideal body type that's walking around in all their glory. But, you know, that's again, it's about acceptance, body positivity, but I, I don't know if we need organized naked events. Don't we, isn't that, don't we have nudist colonies for that? Well, we they're called to, naturalists now. Oh, I'm sorry. Naturalists. Oh, there you go. We used to have, um, Sunray Hills down in Burlington. Right. I don't think that exists anymore. Um, and I, I, I I've been there. Um, I, when I worked for another radio station, we did our show down there. Oh, you did? Twice. Twice. And I, I will say this. Um, I had to embrace it because I was there willingly. We were doing the show. Sure. But when we got... <laughs> 
I was given a tour in a golf cart uh-huh. after the show. Uh-huh. And the guy sitting next to me was in the go- Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was it bumpy terrain? <laughs> Well, I will say this. It was, I did see things that I really didn't need to see. Like there was a guy bending over backwards, fixing his roof as we drove by. And I was just like, oh boy, <laughs> look at that. I, there you have it. I feel like I know you so well now. Yeah. It, I mean, it was, but I had to accept and brace because I was there. 844-967-2789, 844-96-PARTY, Naked Bike, bike Ride, uh, yes, no. What do you think? Karina from Milwaukee is on the line. Good morning, Karina. What do you think? Hi. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, well, you know, the question about personal freedom, um, I would say if you want to go naked, go ahead and make it. But don't make uh, minors who depend on you uh, a decision to do that. I don't care whether they wanted to do it or not. They are not responsible for than you are as an adult. And I think it's that exposure is a cheap exposure. This is not a child topic to talk about it, and children have to have a childhood and not standing in the parade naked for their parents. That might my, my my point. You wanna run around with your uh, I'm sorry, genitals hanging out left and right, all these goodies, I don't want to see it. But if you want to do it, fine, wonderful. Don't make other people do it, especially minors. Thank you, That's Karina. Thank you so much. Appreciate the call. If you want to check in on the naked bike ride, yes, no, nah, not so much. 844-967-2789, 844-96-PARTY. You are listening to As Goes Wisconsin on the Civic Media Radio Network. Welcome back to As Goes Wisconsin. Jane Matnair in for Kristen Bry. Greg Bach is on the board. And my Friday co-host and my very good friend, Carol yes. Kane, is sitting across from me. And you said a friend just texted you what? We're the Thelma and Louise <laughs> of radio. Because I posted, I like to promote. Once again, let me just say, too, because I'm very honored to be able to do this. I'm going to be here every Friday through the rest of the year Yes. Uh, while Kristen is on um, on uh, maternity leave. But I always like to promote, you know, that we're going to be here. So I posted on Facebook and somebody posted a picture of Thelma and Louise and said, <laughs> a dynamic duo. Yeah, there I, we are. I hope I hope we have a better end than they did. You Dude, know, spoilers. Uh, you know what? But here's the, here's the deal. Maybe this is something that I can talk to the doc about after eleven o'clock. It's like every now and then driving that cliff, <laughs> driving off that cliff, is doesn't look like such a bad idea. It's tempting. Yeah, tempting. Yeah. Um, and great, Mike. I'm going to have to have you look a uh, listener when we were first when we were talking about this months ago, and that you were going to be joining me, and I had joked that people call us radio legends, and that's only because we're still alive. It's right. because we haven't died yet. Right. And and a listener sent us a link to a song called We're Not Dead Yet. That's and hilarious. And I think that needs to be one of our one of our bumps on uh, on Fridays is We're Not Dead well, Yet. Well, you know what, though, Jane? Honestly, um, to have been, once again, it's an honor. It has to have been in this business in one community yes. for as long as, I mean, both of us are like Methuselah. We've been around forever. Yep. But it's it's an honor and a privilege to have been accepted by this community yes. and have them embrace us and know like I um I had to have this out of example I had to have uh, my um uh, air conditioner serviced yeah and the guy was standing in my kitchen and all of a sudden he looked at me and he goes are you like the Carol from the radio and I go. Yes, yes, I, I am. am. Yes, I am. And he goes, oh, my God, I love it when you're with Jane. And you know, I was really very nice. And he goes, I listen to you guys for so long. And I go, OK, pump the brakes there, dude. <laughs> I know I'm 64 years old, but, you know, don't need to rub it in. But it really I was just it's so it's such an honor. To, it really is. I agree with you. And to be treated like family. Or, or to be treated like a, like a friend. Right. You know, because you and I have shared a lot of details about our lives over the course of 30 plus years. And yeah, it's just, it's an amazing, it's an amazing welcoming. Yes. And for, for which, like you absolutely. said, we are, we are very, very grateful. Yes, absolutely. So anyway, we're going to change the subject real quickly here. And I, 
I know it's a lot of people have covered this already, but I certainly think that we have to address this as well. Uh, a man with a, a handgun went to the Wisconsin State Capitol on Wednesday demanding to see Governor Evers. Yeah. He was shirtless with a dog on a leash. He had a dog on a leash, which is, that's a bold move. Yeah. And uh, wanted to see the governor apparently about domestic violence against men, which is a thing. Right. And that's not something that we joke about or I, I we, we all take that very seriously because that certainly does happen. Domestic violence across the board is, is wrong. Should, is yes. wrong. Right. Um, but so he got arrested. He managed to post bail almost immediately. Nine o'clock at night, he's back at the state capitol, this time with an assault weapon that's right. loaded. Right. And they arrest him again. Here's, uh, you know, uh, there's so many aspects of this story that are really disturbing. Yes. So many aspects. I would question his mental health, obviously. He's being held for observation now. Yes. Um, and I wouldn't think that if you want to address domestic violence, that you would show up someplace with a handgun and then a semi-automatic later on in the day. Right. I. I That's a wrong I, approach. Yeah, I don't understand the pro thought process on that, which is why I'm questioning his mental health. With, with not, without a doubt. And, and again, he's being held for observation and obviously has some issues. But I do think the rhetoric that we have been tossing around for the last five to six years about harming other Americans and harming fellow Americans who disagree with us, words have power. Right. Words right. are power. Powerful. Yeah, yeah. And the no. way we frame the way we frame things and phrase things absolutely makes a difference. And I think we need to be careful. Ron DeSantis right. said at a rally that when he is made president, as soon as he's in office, he's going to start slitting the throats of federal employees. Okay, that's a quote: slitting the throats. Donald oh, Trump. What's what's he doing? Donald what? Trump just said. If you shoplift, you're going to get shot before you walk out the door. Well, no, that's not going to happen, obviously. Um, I just don't. Yeah, you're right about the whole word I, thing. I just don't under. Are they listening to themselves? I think they're trying to replicate the like when Trump stood on the podium and said, I could shoot somebody in the middle of Times Square and I would get votes. I think what they're trying to do is trying to find their own version of that talk. And they're just coming off sounding insane. Because the original statement's insane. But it's also dangerous. It's da oh, absolutely it's dangerous. And the demonizing of political opponents and then putting targets on them. Maybe no one is saying directly, go attack this person. But when you joke about Nancy Pelosi's husband being assaulted by a man with a hammer and then making jokes about it at a fundraiser... You are almost getting yeah, in, I, an, an implicit okay for this kind of behavior. I, I just, you know, don't they have that little man that lives in their head that stops these words from coming out? I don't think so. Because, I mean, there are certain times that it's like, I have something I want to say, but I keep my mouth shut because it's not going to be the correct thing to say. It's called, we all do it's that. called an internal edit button. Right. We are coming up against the break. We have the bottom of the hour news on the way. When we come back, it's going to be the best, the worst, and the most arrogant of the week. You're listening to As Goes Wisconsin on the Civic Media Radio Network. Welcome back to As Goes Wisconsin. Jane Matt there in for Kristen Bride, Greg Bach on the board, Carol Kane sitting yeah. across for me in the studio. It and is we shocking to me, though. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but that baby is a week old already. I know. And she's so cute. Yeah, she's really cute. She's so cute. If you want to check out uh, little Francis Louise, Kristen and Mike's daughter, already a week and a day old. Yeah. Go to Asco's Wisconsin, either on TikTok, on Instagram, or on Twitter. Okay. And uh, you can go to my Twitter. It's just Jane Matt there. And I reposted their little introduction video of Louise in her and everyone should She's have so cute. everyone should have an as goes Wisconsin onesie. I have one. <laughs> you do. It's it's ill fitting and embarrassing. <laughs> but we're hoping to uh, to have Kristen on the show next Wednesday, 
and give us uh, some updates about what's going on with her life. Before we get on to the best, the worst, and the arrogant of the week, I want to back up. We have a couple texts about the naked bike ride okay. in Madison, and now some lawmakers are talking about making that illegal and instituting fines and things for intentionally, this isn't wouldn't be considered indecent exposure, but... Yeah, just exposed. Okay, you know, now let me ask you something, Jane, before you get to the text real quick. What if they hired, uh, hired, what if they rented out like an entire park and you had to pay to get into the naked bike ride to be a part of it? Do you understand what I mean? I Instead do. of having it out in the public. In the public. Right. That That's an interesting idea. I'm not sure how that, that would work logistically. Yeah. But... Yeah, that 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 might be okay. an option All right. if this but but again, the whole point of the naked bike ride from what I understand is to encourage body pod- positivity and well, be and po- less dependence on on fossil fuels. Well, be positive <laughs> in the park. I mean, it's also two things you're talking about. You're talking about the naked bike ride itself versus whether or not children should be allowed to participate in, so, in those events. I mean, those are two very distinct conversations. Right. Lynn from Oconomowoc, checking in on the text line at 844-967-2789. Just close your eyes, turn your head, go get coffee. I'm a very modest person. After a shower, I wear a beach towel in the locker room while some women groom at the mirrors completely nude. I probably won't participate in the ride or watch it. However, I support the riders and the parents of the girl who was 12, either 10 or 12, okay. who attended John from the Falls. Good morning, everybody. The naked bike ride isn't for me and not something I'd be interested in observing. However, Republicans have been pushing for absolute control when it comes to children, their personal pronouns, for example. For the man in Madison who's so concerned about his own right, how about the rights of my kids to read any books they want to read or the right to not have active shooter drills so they know what to do when someone is hunting them down in their schools? That text should be printed out, framed, and hung on a wall somewhere. Or certainly sent to some lawmakers. Oh, my gosh. It was beautiful. And another one uh, on the uh, from the 715. I feel nudity should be desexualized and normalized. If you don't like what you're seeing, simply don't look. Like so many things, each parent should be allowed to make their choice of how much their family is exposed to and participates in nudity. That being said, taking or having photos of nude minors should definitely be illegal. Absolutely. In my family, we talk about nude bodies and normalize nudity within our house. I don't think we should, we would participate in public nudity ourselves, but if we came across it, I wouldn't make a big deal out of it and would talk about it with my kids and then keep on moving through the rest of our day. Well, yeah, okay, fine. That's, uh, you know, everybody has an opinion on this and that's fine. I just, I did not walk around my house when my kids were little naked. I just didn't. Right. Um, there's a sense of modesty that, you know, I'm mom. I'm, I do know for a fact that Elizabeth walked in on Lou after he got out of the shower. Okay. And she was young. And I know he was mortified because he had just gotten out of the shower. Sure. And she was, oh, I don't know how old she was. I mean, she was young. Uh, probably about uh, eight-ish you know, mm-hmm. and she and her girlfriend were trying to find him and they just went into the bathroom as he was stepping out of the shower. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, I felt so bad for the poor guy. But I I just think that what what Greg said is, is valid. Two very distinct conversations need yes. to be uh, held. But but I, I think that that text about normalizing. Oh, nudity, I agree with that. I, I, I That's absolutely you're absolutely right. And that's where I think. As a society, we're a little bit hypocritical because we use sex to basically sell just about everything. Right. And yet when it comes to nudity, it's like, no, I'm I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm not disagreeing with you. You know, I don't look in the mirror when I get out of the shower. (laughs) I race past the mirror. It's like, I don't need to see that. Right. You know, I, I, I certainly wouldn't inflict it on anyone else. Heavens to Betsy. No, I mean, you know. I'm just grateful I've been married for almost 40 years and he doesn't care that, you know, (laughs) things are sagging a little bit. Gravity will always win. Right. Gravity will always win. Right. All right. Anytime you want to check in with us, 844-967-2789. You can call and or text if you're watching 
us on uh, Facebook or Twitter. You're on the live stream. You can also leave a comment there. We check those as well. Good, the bad, and the arrogant of the week. I think this is a good thing. In the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel this morning, a bill under consideration, a bill under consideration, Carol Kane. Okay, got it. Would allow spouses of veterans to be admitted to state veterans' homes before the veteran themselves. So if your husband was in the military, yes, his wife has Alzheimer's. Okay. She would be allowed to go into a state veteran's home before he's even there so she can be taken care of because she has Alzheimer's. I, to, to be honest with you, I already thought that was the situation. That is not the situation. Because um, we actually, uh, the list of benefits that are available are pretty uh, unbelievable Extensive. because Lou was a Vietnam vet. Did you know that? I did not know that. Yeah. Lou uh, served during the Vietnam War. Oh. Um, so we went and signed up for benefits and there are a lot of things that are available for me, but I was, I, I really thought that was already the case. So apparently not. No. Okay. Senator Joan Balweg of Marcusons, who is one of the bill's authors, says she has heard of instances of veterans gaming the system and entering a home before they need to, just so they can get care for their spouse. Oh, wow. So, so yeah. They're, okay. they're trying to get in maybe long before they need to be there so their spouse can be taken care of. Well, I think this is a good thing. I do too. I mean, I, I really think that this is a good thing if there's health issues that can um, can be taken care of. And it's not like it's free. No. You know, I mean, it's it's just the fact that if you're the spouse of of, of a military person, man or woman, yeah, I think it should be extended to you. Well, and those spouses make sacrifices too. Military, oh yeah, military families make a lot of sacrifices. Yeah. Well, he was. This was uh, yeah, way before I met him, but uh, you know, and he he kind of shied away from applying for benefits because he. Here's the deal: he was in the military band. He got plucked to be in the military band. Okay, he was army. He played the bass trombone, and he was really good at it. And he did it professionally for a long time. And so he always says, I don't deserve this. Oh. I didn't serve in combat. And I said, yeah, but you got the uniform. You, you, you got, got the discharge. Yeah. Was he was honorably discharged. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's just, it's an interesting process to go through. So I hope that this does go through. I really do. I, I, I do too. Spouses deserve a place to go as well as the veterans. They paid the price. When the veterans served, they were at home. Maybe they didn't have their veteran to help them financially or personally. Many raised families without oh, their sure. veteran spouse because they got shipped out. So hopefully this will move forward. And again, I, like you, kind of assumed that that was already the case, but that was not so. Yeah, okay. So huh. this interesting. This is actually seems like good legislation. This is, is wait, do you smell that? Is that? progress <laughs> it, it 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 does smell like progress oh i like it i know it does smell like progress so that is our good for the week the bad yeah is the gop in disarray well yeah we know that i mean kevin mccarthy just got ousted right you know who this really benefits this benefits russia oh yeah well. they love this well, of course they do. They love this. Anything that makes America look weak, confused, disorganized. Russia and China. Russia and China. They love this stuff. Sure. Right. That's I, not good. I, uh, you know, at some point in time, can we get our crap together? That would be nice. I and Something to shoot for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a goal. A goal. A political always, goal. Always good to have a goal. Well, I... Uh, no, the, the, I think we all know that the GOP has some problems. I, you know, I, I, there are problems on both sides of the fence. To but, tell the you the truth. but the two parties are not the no, same. No, they're no. not. And we've seen it with the debates and we've seen it with some of these rallies and things like that. And the GOP right at this particular juncture is coming off looking like a bunch of doofuses who don't want to govern. Yeah, well, who don't really seem to want to govern. Well, I, in all honesty, Jane, we said this when we, before we even got on, 
I don't know why anybody wants to get into politics these days because it's such a crapshoot. And, you know, the thing is, is that um, they they just look like a, they look like clowns. They look incompetent. They really do. I mean, the only part, and to tell you the truth, I do like Nikki Haley. I like the fact that she's got some cojones. You know what I mean? She doesn't come out. She comes out swinging. Yeah. Good for you. And I think that that's probably, if I was ever going to vote GOP, I'd be leaning towards her because I, she's a woman. Is she? No, I'm just kidding. Of course she is. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, and then this is an absolutely horrible, terrible idea. And this is in the Nat uh, National Review. Brett Baer from Fox News is going to be hosting a closed speaker candidate debate on Monday between Steve Scalise, Jim Jordan, and Hearn. I'm not sh sure who, who Hearn is, uh, but apparently also someone who is interested now in running for Speaker of the House. This has never happened before, as far as I can tell, that, that they had a televised debate of the candidates no for this has never house? happened before uh i i have a, I have, a, I have a clip of what that's gonna sound like though for everyone who wants oh. to it's just, <laughs> just crying babies just it's the democrats fault yeah. we're here <laughs> that wasn't frankie lou that was grown adults whining about making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year that we pay for that's your little preview for monday night's debate yep i should win awards you should be We'll put that in for next where, year. Where is this taking place? It's going to be there. It's going to be done from the Capitol, and uh, it's going to be on Fox. Oh, I thought Fox. it was in. I thought it was in the ninth ring of hell. My mistake. Whose whose idea was this? Probably Fox. This is silly. Yeah, it's not a good idea. We got two minutes left. I want to get to the arrogant Aaron Rodgers this week called Travis Kelsey, Mister Pfizer, because Kelsey had a Pfizer ad. Running, and of course, we all know that Aaron doesn't need to be vaccinated and doesn't believe in vaccinations. So he was dumping on on Travis Kelsey on the Pat McAfee show. I think there's some sentiment, there's some sort of moral victory out there that we hung with the champs and that our defense played well. Pat didn't have a crazy game, and Mr. Pfizer, we kind of shut him down a little bit. He didn't have a crazy impact on the game. I think Aaron Rodgers is jealous that he's not getting enough attention. Because now everybody's watching Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift. I agree with that, right? I actually uh, just I just said that to somebody the other day because they were I, I was Jordan Love was they were talking to Jordan Love and he was doing a press thing and I said this has got to be killing yeah. Aaron Rodgers yeah that's and you know what good too bad boo boo. Yeah, no kidding. Too bad. All right, we're coming up against the break. We will be back in just a moment. You are listening to As Goes Wisconsin on the Civic Media Radio Network. So Welcome back you to As Goes Wisconsin. Be. Friday morning, Jane Matnair in for Kristen Bride. Greg Bach is on the board. Carol Kane sitting across from me in the studio. Coming up next hour, Dr. Michael McCutcheon will be here to fix your life. Okie dokie. If you have questions about a relationship or your job or... Anything like that, any kind of lifestyle stuff you, you would like some help with, you can always text us at 844-967-2789 or send us an email at asgoeswisconsin at civicmedia.us. Ch uh, changing gears a little bit, so we're talking food and restaurants. Yeah. And Milwaukee just got kind of a nice acknowledgement. Yeah, uh, it was uh, the New York Times. You're going to have to look it up because I lost the I lost the link. Um, but. The New York Times went through the 50 best restaurants in the nation. And the, it starts with a B, Jane. Why am I blanking? Not uh, Dallas Jerry's. No, 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 no. Um, it's down in the Third Ward area. And uh, it was named as Bacchus? like. No. Um, Braze or something like that. I think it's Braze. And so um, it was named like one of the best restaurants in the nation. Wow. Which I thought was really very, very nice. It is. Really. Because we don't usually, you know, we're Chicago's stepchild. Right. And we always have to bow down to what's happening in Chicago. And uh, we have some really fine restaurants here in the area. And they just don't get as much love as they as they as, should. As they deserve. Right. Yeah. We, and we have some, well, look at Adam Siegel. 
you know, Chef Adam Siegel. I mean, he's there. They have uh, he's won so many awards and I've seen him at cooking contests and things like that. And um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, Kohler Food and Wine Experience. They highlight a lot of the local guys yeah. that are great. You even have great places like up in the Sheboygan area. Um, the Black Pig comes to mind that's up there. Um, also, uh, there's a couple of uh, a couple of other places that are really, really good. And people always think of like Kohler as having like the immigrant room and, you know, those kinds of places. But you've got other great, great restaurants in the area. So it was nice to see that we got a little that Milwaukee got a little getting, bit of love, getting some love. Absolutely. Braze is an absolutely amazing restaurant. Very delicious. And what I like about them is Braze it conjures the idea of meats. If you are a vegetarian or vegan, you call ahead and you tell them they will prepare or reimagine dishes to fit your dietary oh, needs, nice. which oh. is very, very nice. Another one that was great on Farwell in Milwaukee that's gotten, I believe, a James, not a James Beard Award, but it's got a nomination is Ardent. Oh, uh, sure. Yeah. And, and, and what, what, what kind of food do they it's, eat? It's, it's a chef's menu. So whatever they're cooking up, that's what you're going to eat. And they're going to give you 10 small courses. And you think to yourself... Well, I'm going to be hungry in 20 minutes. You will be stuffed to the yeah. gills. Ten courses is a lot. Yeah, it's a but it's like they, they real put small, real small things, just bite sized stuff. It's real, but it's gorgeous. The food is amazing, and it's uh, the you know down to like the owner. He's like, yeah, my mom made the napkins. You know, like it's <laughs> it's there's no pretension in this room of absolute like cuisine. Okay, here's my question though: Is there pretension in the food? I mean. You can find it if you want that because it is small and that's a, but, but like what Bridget and I did when my wife and I did on our fifth anniversary, we went there and we actually sat at the bar. And when you sit at the bar, I always tell people, I don't care if you go to a diner or a five star, three star Michelin, Michelin restaurant. I don't care if they have a bar, sit there, you will have more fun than you've ever had in your life because you can interact with right. the staff and the owner was there and we were, do, we were drinking and we were having wine. He was like, let's do some shots. And then they signed our menu as a, and said, happy fifth anniversary. Oh. If you go to Arden, ask for the bar seating. I tell you for the noble, but unfortunately they closed. That breaks my heart. They were a great restaurant as well. But Arden, if you have it, it is expensive. Sure. Right. It's a once in an every once in a right. while, but Very it's special amazing notes. food. Cause my only issue is I don't, I am not a pretentious food person, and I don't want kumquat infusion oh. in my oh, saffron sure. rice right. with with you're more simple with whipped you know egg some whites foam and, or something. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I That's don't. exactly what you'll get there. So you should go there because <laughs> you will have fun, and they won't make you feel like less than because you don't have the palate or. The snooty attitude. You're like, oh, this is really good. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. And you they never know. You're not going to judge me? No. I'm not going to be food shamed? No, absolutely not. They are so fun no. and so nice. So, uh, and that's the one thing that, because I used to participate. I used to MC. They would have a chef competitions at Cathedral Square. And I, I used to MC those. And um, these guys are just as... As homegrown as they come, really. The chefs. And, right. Yeah. And and when I used to MC the uh, Midwest Chef's Tent up at the Kohler Food and Wine Experience, same kind of thing. And they they may have put a bit of pretension in some of their food, but like most of the time, it's the simpler, the better. I agree with you. If the, if the ingredients are good. Exactly. Right? Exactly. There's a guy out of uh, Madison. It's Latois. And he is phenomenal. That's another great place. And it's just, he's just basic, you know? He just loves to cook and make people happy. And that's what most of these guys are. That's, they just want to make you happy. And if you sit there and eat their food and like. And enjoy it. Right. Like the Black Pig up in Sheboygan, Rob Hurey. He's a great guy. And I, um, every time I go, he's so happy to see me smiling and eating his food. He'd always come up to the table and go, hey, Carol, how are you? How's the food? And I'm like, well, it's delicious. This is great. And it's, it's always humming. Stefano's also. That's another great place up in Sheboygan. If you want to go there. Listen, how much do I know about I food? was going to say, good gosh, girl, we're going on a road. <laughs> we're going on a restaurant road trip. 
That will be sponsored by Civic Media. <laughs> do, do you, you need a producer Craig? there? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, we yeah. would have to have a producer along. Good. I just feel like I need to be there to help. And, you know, <laughs> and, and do not discount the Joe Bartolottas of the world and how, you know, talk about a regular Joe. Seriously. Yeah. Oh, that man is he's so a, down to earth. He's so, he really is. He's so, so nice. And their restaurant down in Wauwatosa is one of my favorite places. Had the best Frickin' roast chicken on the planet. There. <laughs> Carol has spoken. Okay. Now we know. Thank you, Carol Kane. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're coming up against the top of the hour news. When we come back, Dr. Michael McCutcheon will be here to fix your life. If you have questions or comments, you can always check in, call and or text at 844-967-2789. Don't go away. You're listening to As Goes Wisconsin. This is the Civic Media Radio Network.